Chapter 72 of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. At that time that the war and the siege were against Cush, Moses fled from Egypt from Pharaoh, who sought to kill him for having slain the Egyptian. And Moses was eighteen years old when he fled from Egypt from the presence of Pharaoh, and he fled and escaped to the camp of Kikianus, which at that time was besieging Cush. And Moses was nine years in the camp of Kikianus, king of Cush, all the time that they were besieging Cush, and Moses went out and came in with them. And the king and princes and all the fighting men loved Moses, for he was great and worthy. His stature was like a noble lion, his face was like the sun, and his strength was like that of a lion, and he was counselor to the king. And at the end of nine years Kikianus was seized with a mortal disease, and his illness prevailed over him, and he died on the seventh day. So his servants embalmed him and carried him and buried him opposite the city gate to the north of the land of Egypt. And they built over him an elegant, strong, and high building, and they placed great stones below. And the king's scribes engraved upon those stones all the might of their king Kikianus, and all his battles which he had fought, behold, they are written there at this day. Now after the death of Kikianus, king of Cush, it grieved his men and troops greatly on account of the war. So they said one to the other, Give us counsel, what are we to do at this time, as we have resided in the wilderness nine years away from our homes? If we say we will fight against the city, many of us will fall wounded or killed, and if we remain here in the siege, we shall also die. For now all the kings of Aram and of the children of the east will hear that our king is dead, and they will attack us suddenly in a hostile manner, and they will fight against us and leave no remnant of us. Now therefore let us go and make a king over us, and let us remain in the siege until the city is delivered up to us. And they wished to choose on that day a man for king from the army of Kikianus, and they found no object of their choice like Moses to reign over them. And they hastened and stripped off each man his garments and cast them upon the ground, and they made a great heap and placed Moses thereon. And they rose up and blew with trumpets and called out before him, and said, May the king live, may the king live. And all the people and nobles swore unto him to give him for a wife Adoniah the queen, the Cushite wife of Kikianus, and they made Moses king over them on that day. And all the people of Cush issued a proclamation on that day, saying, Every man must give something to Moses of what is in his possession. And they spread out a sheet upon the heap, and every man cast into it something of what he had, one a gold earring, and the other a coin. Also of onyx stones, bdellium, pearls, and marble did the children of Cush cast unto Moses upon the heap, also silver and gold in great abundance. And Moses took all the silver and gold, all the vessels, and the bdellium, and the onyx stones, which all the children of Cush had given to him, and he placed them amongst his treasures. And Moses reigned over the children of Cush on that day, in the place of Kikianus king of Cush. Chapter 73 of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 73 In the fifty-fifth year of the reign of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that is in the hundred and fifty-seventh year of the Israelites going down into Egypt, reigned Moses in Cush. Moses was twenty-seven years old when he began to reign over Cush, and forty years did he reign. And the Lord granted Moses favor and grace in the eyes of all the children of Cush, and the children of Cush loved him exceedingly. So Moses was favored by the Lord and by men. And in the seventh day of his reign, all the children of Cush assembled and came before Moses and bowed down to him to the ground. And all the children spoke together in the presence of the king, saying, Give us counsel that we may see what is to be done to the city. For it is now nine years that we have been besieging around about the city, and we have not seen our children and our wives. So the king answered them, saying, If you will hearken to my voice in all that I shall command you, then will the Lord give the city into our hands, and we shall subdue it. For if we fight with them, as in the former battle which we had with them before the death of Kikianus, many of us will fall down wounded as before. Now therefore, behold, here is counsel for you in this matter. If you will hearken to my voice, then will the city be delivered into our hands. So all the forces answered the king, saying, All that our Lord shall command, that will we do. 
And Moses said unto them, Pass through and proclaim a voice in the whole camp unto all the people, saying, Thus says the king, Go into the forest and bring with you of the young ones of the stork, each man a young one in his hand. And any person transgressing the word of the king, who shall not go bring his young one, he shall die, and the king will take all belonging to him. And when you shall bring them, they shall be in your keeping. You shall rear them until they grow up, and you shall teach them to dart upon, as is the way of the young ones of the hawk. So all the children of Cush heard the words of Moses, and they rose up and caused a proclamation to be issued throughout the camp, saying, Unto you, all the children of Cush, the king's order is that you go all together to the forest, and catch there the young storks, each man his young one in his hand, and you shall bring them home. And any person violating the order of the king shall die, and the king will take all that belongs to him. And all the people did so, and they went out to the wood, and they climbed the fir trees, and caught each man a young one in his hand, all the young of the storks, and they brought them into the desert, and reared them by the order of the king, and they taught them to dart upon similar to young hawks. And after the young storks were reared, the king ordered them to be hungered for three days, and all the people did so. And on the third day the king said unto them, Strengthen yourselves, and become valiant men, and put on each man his armor, and gird on his sword upon him, and ride each man his horse, and take each his young stork in his hand. And we will rise up and fight against the city at that place where the serpents are. And all the people did as the king had ordered. And they took each man his young one in his hand, and they went away. And when they came to the place of the serpents, the king said to them, Send forth each man his young stork upon the serpents. And they sent forth each man his young stork at the king's order. And the young storks ran upon the serpents, and they devoured them all, and destroyed them out of that place. And when the king and people had seen all the serpents were destroyed in that place, all the people set up a great shout. And they approached and fought against the city, and took it and subdued it, and they entered the city. And there died on that day one thousand and one hundred men of the people of the city, all that inhabited the city. But of the people besieging, not one died. So all the children of Cush went each to his home, to his wife and children, and to all belonging to him. And Balaam the magician, when he saw that the city was taken, he opened the gate, and he and his two sons and eight brothers fled and returned to Egypt, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They are the sorcerers and magicians who are mentioned in the book of the law, standing against Moses when the Lord brought the plagues upon Egypt. So Moses took the city by his wisdom, and the children of Cush placed him on the throne instead of Kikianus, king of Cush. And they placed the royal crown upon his head, and they gave him for a wife Adoniah the Cushite queen, wife of Kikianus. And Moses feared the Lord God of his fathers, so that he came not to her, nor did he turn his eyes to her. For Moses remembered how Abraham had made his servant Eliezer swear, saying unto him, Thou shalt not take a woman from the daughters of Canaan, for my son Isaac. Also what Isaac did when Jacob had fled from his brother, when he commanded him, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan, nor make alliance with any of the children of Ham. For the Lord our God gave Ham the son of Noah, and his children, and all his seed as slaves to the children of Shem, and to the children of Japheth, and unto their seed after them for slaves for ever. Therefore Moses turned not his heart nor his eyes to the wife of Kikianus all the days that he reigned over Cush. And Moses feared the Lord his God all his life, and Moses walked before the Lord in truth with all his heart and soul. He turned not from the right way all the days of his life. He declined not from the way either to the right or to the left in which Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had walked. And Moses strengthened himself in the kingdom of the children of Cush, and he guided the children of Cush with his usual wisdom, and Moses prospered in his kingdom. And at that time Aram and the children of the east heard that Kikianus king of Cush had died, so Aram and the children of the east rebelled against Cush in those days. And Moses gathered all the children of Cush, a people very mighty, about thirty thousand men, and he went forth to fight with Aram and the children of the east. And they went at first to the children of the east, and when the children of the east heard their report, they went to meet them, and engaged in battle with them. And the war was severe against the children of the east, 
So the Lord gave all the children of the east into the hand of Moses, and about three hundred men fell down slain. And all the children of the east turned back and retreated, so Moses and the children of Cush followed them and subdued them, and put a tax upon them as was their custom. So Moses and all the people with him passed from there to the land of Aram for battle. And the people of Aram also went to meet them, and they fought against them, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Moses, and many of the men of Aram fell down wounded. And Aram also were subdued by Moses, and the people of Cush, and also gave their usual tax. And Moses brought Aram and the children of the east under subjection to the children of Cush, and Moses and all the people who were with him turned to the land of Cush. And Moses strengthened himself in the kingdom of the children of Cush, and the Lord was with him, and all the children of Cush were afraid of him. Chapter 76 of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. And Moses the son of Amram was still king in the land of Cush in those days, and he prospered in his kingdom, and he conducted the government of the children of Cush in justice, in righteousness, and integrity. And all the children of Cush loved Moses all the days that he reigned over them, and all the inhabitants of the land of Cush were greatly afraid of him. And in the fortieth year of the reign of Moses over Cush, Moses was sitting on the royal throne whilst Adoniah the queen was before him, and all the nobles were sitting around him. And Adoniah the queen said before the king and the princes, What is this thing which you, the children of Cush, have done for this long time? Surely you know that for forty years that this man has reigned over Cush, he has not approached me, nor has he served the gods of the children of Cush. Now therefore, hear, O ye children of Cush, and let this man no more reign over you, as he is not of our flesh. Behold, Menachrus, my son, is grown up. Let him reign over you. For it is better for you to serve the son of your Lord than to serve a stranger, a slave of the king of Egypt. And all the people and nobles of the children of Cush heard the words which Adoniah the queen had spoken in their ears. And all the people were preparing until evening, and in the morning they rose up early and made Menachrus the son of Kikianus king over them. And all the children of Cush were afraid to stretch forth their hand against Moses, for the Lord was with Moses, and the children of Cush remembered the oath which they swore unto Moses. Therefore they did no harm to him. But the children of Cush gave many presents to Moses, and sent him from them with great honor. So Moses went forth from the land of Cush, and went home, and ceased to reign over Cush. And Moses was sixty-six years old when he went out of the land of Cush, for the thing was from the Lord. For the period had arrived which he had appointed in the days of old, to bring forth Israel from the affliction of the children of Ham. So Moses went to Midian, for he was afraid to return to Egypt, on account of Pharaoh, and he went and sat at a well of water in Midian. And the seven daughters of Ruel the Midianite went out to feed their father's flock, and they came to the well and drew water to water their father's flock. So the shepherds of Midian came and drove them away, and Moses rose up and helped them and watered the flock. And they came home to their father Ruel and told him what Moses did for them. And they said, An Egyptian man has delivered us from the hands of the shepherds. He drew up water for us and watered the flock. And Ruel said to his daughters, And where is he? Wherefore have you left the man? And Ruel sent for him and fetched him and brought him home, and he ate bread with him. And Moses related to Ruel that he had fled from Egypt and that he reigned forty years over Cush, and that they afterwards had taken the government from him and had sent him away in peace, with honor and with presence. And when Ruel had heard the words of Moses, Ruel said within himself, I will put this man into the prison house, whereby I shall conciliate the children of Cush, for he has fled from them. And they took and put him into the prison house, and Moses was in prison ten years, and whilst Moses was in the prison house, Zipporah the daughter of Ruel took pity over him, and supported him with bread and water all the time. And all the children of Israel were yet in the land of Egypt serving the Egyptians in all manner of hard work, and the hand of Egypt continued in severity over the children of Israel in those days. At that time the Lord smote Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he afflicted him with the plague of leprosy from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Owing to the cruel treatment of the children of Israel was this plague at that time from the Lord upon Pharaoh king of Egypt. 
For the Lord had hearkened to the prayer of his people, the children of Israel, and their cry reached them on account of their hard work. Still his anger did not turn from them, and the hand of Pharaoh was still stretched out against the children of Israel. And Pharaoh hardened his neck before the Lord, and he increased his yoke over the children of Israel, and embittered their lives with all manner of hard work. And when the Lord had inflicted the plague upon Pharaoh king of Egypt, he asked the wise men and sorcerers to cure him. And his wise men and sorcerers said unto him, that if the blood of little children were put into the wounds, he would be healed. And Pharaoh hearkened to them, and sent his ministers to Goshen to the children of Israel, to take their little children. And Pharaoh's ministers went and took the infants of the children of Israel from the bosoms of their mothers by force, and they brought them to Pharaoh daily, a child each day, and the physicians killed them and applied them to the plague. Thus did they all the days. And the number of the children which Pharaoh slew was three hundred and seventy-five. But the Lord hearkened not to the physicians of the king of Egypt, and the plague went on increasing mightily. And Pharaoh was ten years afflicted with that plague, still the heart of Pharaoh was more hardened against the children of Israel. And at the end of ten years the Lord continued to afflict Pharaoh with destructive plagues. And the Lord smote him with a bad tumor and sickness at the stomach, and that plague turned to a severe boil. And at that time the two ministers of Pharaoh came from the land of Goshen where all the children of Israel were, and went to the house of Pharaoh and said to him, We have seen the children of Israel slacken in their work and negligent in their labor. And when Pharaoh heard the words of his ministers, his anger was kindled against the children of Israel exceedingly, for he was greatly grieved at his bodily pain. And he answered and said, Now that the children of Israel know that I am ill, they turn and scoff at us. Now therefore harness my chariot for me, and I will betake myself to Goshen, and will see the scoff of the children of Israel with which they are deriding me. So his servants harnessed the chariot for him. And they took and made him ride upon a horse, for he was not able to ride of himself. And he took with him ten horsemen and ten footmen, and went to the children of Israel to Goshen. And when they had come to the border of Egypt, the king's horse passed into a narrow place, elevated in the hollow part of the vineyard, fenced on both sides, the low, plain country being on the other side. And the horses ran rapidly in that place and pressed each other, and the other horses pressed the king's horse. And the king's horse fell into the low plain whilst the king was riding upon it, and when he fell the chariot turned over the king's face, and the horse lay upon the king, and the king cried out, for his flesh was very sore. And the flesh of the king was torn from him, and his bones were broken, and he could not ride, for this thing was from the Lord to him. For the Lord had heard the cries of his people, the children of Israel, and their affliction. And his servants carried him upon their shoulders, a little at a time, and they brought him back to Egypt, and the horsemen who were with him came also back to Egypt. And they placed him in his bed, and the king knew that his end was come to die. So Aparanith the queen, his wife, came and cried before the king, and the king wept a great weeping with her. And all his nobles and servants came on that day and saw the king in that affliction, and wept a great weeping with him. And the princes of the king and all his counselors advised the king to cause one to reign in his stead in the land, whomsoever he should choose from his sons. And the king had three sons and two daughters, which Aparanith, the queen, his wife, had borne to him, besides the king's children of concubines. And these were their names, the firstborn Othri, the second Atakam, and the third Murian, and their sisters, the name of the elder Bathia, and of the other Akuzi. And Othri, the firstborn of the king, was an idiot, precipitate, and hurried in his words. But Adakam was a cunning and a wise man, and knowing in all the wisdom of Egypt, but of unseemly aspect, thick in flesh, and very short in stature. His height was one cubit. And when the king saw Adakam, his son, intelligent and wise in all things, the king resolved that he should be king in his stead after his death. And he took for him a wife, Gaduda, daughter of Abalot, and he was ten years old, and she bare unto him four sons. And he afterward went and took three wives, and begat eight sons and three daughters. And the disorder greatly prevailed over the king, 
and his flesh stank like the flesh of a carcass cast upon the field in summertime, during the heat of the sun. And when the king saw that his sickness had greatly strengthened itself over him, he ordered his son Adakam to be brought unto him, and they made him king over the land in his place. And at the end of three years the king died in shame, disgrace, and disgust, and his servants carried him and buried him in the sepulchre of the kings of Egypt, in Zoan Mitzraim. But they embalmed him not, as was usual with kings, for his flesh was putrid, and they could not approach to embalm him on account of the stench, so they buried him in haste. For this evil was from the Lord to him, for the Lord had requited him evil for the evil which in his days he had done to Israel. And he died with terror and with shame, and his son Adakam reigned in his place.